Hey there YouTube. Well, it's been a while since I have done a video. I was actually sick for a while. And I had a bunch of other stuff going on so I wasn't really able to jump on here and make a video for anybody. Um, I'm out in the garage right now. And we got, a, we got that snowstorm blowing in. Supposed to get like 10 inches of snow. And yeah, we got some winds. I got the laptop out here with me hooked up to the Davis. So I figured I'd show you. I got some wind readings and some power readings here. Let me take the camera off of here. And we also got an electrical update. I got a new box going on. Let's see here. We got some. Some pretty decent winds tonight. It's been averaging above 10 miles an hour. There's 15, 14. Here's the cameras. You can see just outside there is. <laughs> it's a tad snowy. Let's see here if this other camera's working for me. Uh, no. I don't think so. Yeah, it is. It's just out, outside the door here. Wind and snow. Um, but anyway, here's the wind turbine. The Windy Nation's up on the pole. Can't see it because of the snow. But uh, let's jump over here. Here's Cumulus. This is reading directly off of the weather station, the Davis which is in the house. I just had a lowest wind chill of one below. Lowest apparent temperature, 0. 0.6 degrees above zero. Oh, yeah. You can see that our our average wind is 12 mile an hour. And the Davis Vantage View I know updates every two and a half seconds. So, you know, it's near real time. It's not an exact real time and it's not you know, whatever you want to call it, but uh, I got the inverters working. I got I took this the 22 to 60 volt, 1000 watt inverter apart. It had two bad MOSFETs in it, so I changed them out. Um, it was still working, but it was going directly to dump, so I had to disconnect the dump load. Uh, that seems to be working pretty good now. I don't have it hooked up to the... Oh wait, yes I do. Yes, I do have it hooked up. Do I? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got it hooked up to the system here. This, I kind of have the wires just kind of temporarily hooked up. But I made a, a significant change here. Let me move my tripod. This is kind of going to be a three-topic video. Going to go a little bit over the wind speeds going on. I'll kind of read them off, and I'll show you the power output. See, I still have my volt and amp meters here. It's really dark out here because it's so cold. So what I've done is I have my drop light, but I, I move my voltmeter to the other side, and my amps is on this side now. That little 6-inch Carlon box is gone. I got this big 12 by 12 by 6 inch box, nice and deep. In and outputs are on the same side. Let's slide the light down here, and I'll show you this. I got... I got the DC coming off of the rectifier. There's a heat sink on this one. This is a new rectifier. And it's cool. It's not hot. Got some thermal paste on there. Plus and minus come out. This side here is negative. This side is negative. Ooh, that was a big one. So, here, let's do, uh, before I jump into that, here, I'll show you my... 1.63 kilowatt hours in 82 hours. So it's been pretty decent. This is still all running off the Windy Nation. Uh, anyway, this uh, what I have going on here before we go into the box is I got the negative side of the rectifier coming in here. And these are the bolts that were part of the mounting hardware 
those plastic brackets, Oops. the plastic brackets that you get with those ANL fuses. You can get them on eBay. They're like twelve dollars. You get two of them, and they usually come out of two hundred fifty amp ANL fuse. I call them ANL fuses. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, so the brass coated bolts, you know, they're heavy gauge bolt. I think they're 5 16 18 thread, if I'm not mistaken. I gotta, I'll double check, but I got me one of these things too. These are invaluable if you have a workshop and you got one of these kinds of drawers. Oops, you got one of these kinds of drawers. Oh, yep, see? And then you get nuts and bolts getting stuck. You got a drawer like this. You gotta get one of these. These things are freaking awesome. But anyway. Uh, I thought I just saw an ANL fuse here, but um Yeah, that heat sink on that rectifier is just one of these heat sinks. This is my solid state really. This is a 40 amp rated supposedly I really don't believe that sticker because I've already had a 40 amp relay basically catch on fire um, <clears throat> but anyway see, got some nice winds uh, the negative side goes into the box there's the the shunt is back here on the inside so this is in this is out and this side goes out and up to both inverters uh, the negative side is daisy chain, so it's negative here, runs up the back, negative there, runs up and around, and comes out there. And the amp meter hooks up to that. Uh, the positive side here, these wires aren't color coded. They're just something I grabbed out of the box to get it hooked up because I lost a little bit of interest in wind. Uh, it's slowly coming back, and I'll get into that a little later. But this is the positive side in. When I pop the cover off the box, I'll show you what that does. But that goes into that heavy-duty relay that I had right here on the wall. Um, and it's normally closed to the 10 to 30 volt inverter, 500 watt. Normally closed on this inverter, okay? And it goes directly, directly through to the in input of this inverter, which I don't have the dump load on here right now because uh, I'm home. So, you know, if we lose power or whatever, I'll come out here and I'll I'll put the C-clamps on the rectifier and shut that turbine right down. Or I'll come in and I'll hook it up to the battery bank and let it charge and disconnect these all, but, you know, that's whatever. Um, so anyway, what happens is, just like the way it was set up before, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see that I have that golf cart voltage reducer. It's a 24 to 60 volt input, and it'll drop it down to 12 volt, 10 amps. And that's inside this box. I have a, I think it's a 48,000 microfarad electrolytic cap. Uh, I think it's 60 volt. That's inside this box. That relay is inside this box and those bolts are perfect the input and output i can switch them if i wanted to uh, what will happen is when that inverter or that voltage regulator kicks in i got that status led there that blinks i'll show you that's unplugged now see how it's blinking faster and faster with the voltage so when my volts go up over 24 volts it activates the relay and then that light will come on solid and this will be the only inverter that's on the thousand watt but up to 23 and a half volts both inverters work together and I've had it pushing well over 600 watts 700 watts with both inverters working so they do work together very well even though their voltage ranges are very different um, but let's see here. Let me, I'll get the tripod over here. We'll, we'll let this film roll. I'll uh, yank this cover off of this thing here so we can kind of do a little bit of an inside deal of what's going on inside this thing. 
it's nothing fancy. I mean, everything is inside here. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you shouldn't have that voltage reducer in there. And I lost my drill. Here it is. But for how often it comes on and how much heat it really puts out, even when it was under a regular load on a golf cart, it was on a 36 volt golf cart and it never got hot. And the load was right at its, I think it was the load was like eight or 10 amps itself. Uh, let's see, let's get this cover off. Okay, so here we go. It looks a lot worse than it is, but it's not. Okay. Let me put this here. See, I got these wires nice and long so I can give you the grand tour. Okay, as you can see, here's the shunt. Let's turn this light more that way. Here's the shunt right there. This is right inside the box now. Okay, as you can see, here's the DC ground in. And then it goes over to the voltmeter DC is on this side. And then it goes through the shunt. Here's the meter read sensing wires for the amp meter. And then it goes out. Here's the DC side of the cap. And then it goes out here into the negative side of the inverters. And the positive comes in in the back there. Comes up, wraps around this front wire goes in, there's the positive side of the capacitor, okay, and also the positive side of the meter is there too, for the voltmeter on the front panel. Um, that then goes through the normally closed side, which is the bottom side of the relay, and then that goes out to the top post here. Which will go into which goes into the 500 watt inverter, which is the 10 to 30 volt. Um, I'm gonna do a, another bolt up on top here, which will be the output for the 22 to 60 volt inverter. I want to keep it on its own thing, so I don't have to be messing with all these. You know, if I have to unhook one, I can. Uh, but right now, I just have it thrown together because, like I said, I lost a lot of interest in wind. Um, but anyway, here's the 12 volt output on the voltage reducer, 24 to 60 volt input. Okay. So here's the fused input to there. The plus side comes off of the top of the cap. The negative side comes off the top of the cap, um, because it's right there. Keep the wires as short as possible. And it's 12 wire, number 12 wire going to the cap. So it's also going into this. Okay. And this is number 12 wire that comes out of here that goes into this relay. Okay, now these two wires coming down, they just go to the status LED. They're just, see there's the back of the, they just go to this here. And that's just hot glued into a little mount, nothing fancy, but that's the back of the meters. Uh, I got this big box because I wanted to put everything inside, kind of keep it clean. Um, you know. It looks a lot better that way. You know, that way everything's contained. I got nice long leads on all this so I can take the lid off and I can rest it right here on the grinder just to kind of show you what's going on. But that voltage reducer will never get hot. It's ice, ice cold. Uh, if, if, you know, when summertime gets here, if I ever notice it is, you know, getting warmer than I, I'm comfortable with, I'll throw a fan on there. That ain't nothing to do. I mean, I'll hook that up to the the relay, you know, so when that's 12 volts, that'll be, you know, when that relay kicks on, it'll turn that fan on and exhaust it and put an air filter and a mesh screen on the bottom and put the fan on top so it sucks the heat out. You know, simple, 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 simple. But the reason why I lost some interest in wind, I'm gonna show you, is because of that thing right there. This right here. Which I'm sure most. Oh, that's not gonna let me focus. Anyway, the high turbine is what made me lose interest. So, wind. I'm losing interest in wind. You know, winter time is the time I get wind. It's fun to play with. You know, I I, 
I did a lot of prep work for that turbine and they tell me the 48 volt won't charge 48 volt battery pack. Now what the hell is up with that? There, there's something wrong there. And I can't get my money back so... And you know for me to ship that turbine back would cost me a lot of money. A lot of money. So I'm just, yeah, I'm either going to keep it or if anybody out there has a controller that will work with a 48 volt turbine and you're interested, get in touch with me. Uh, the, the turbine is brand new. Their quality control, high, high energies quality control says the turbine is fine. Um, I don't have any real way of testing it. I have battery power drills. I mean, I have electric drills, but... I really shouldn't have to be going through the crap to fabricate a, a a system in order to hook that thing up to my power tools in order to test something that should should already be working. You know what I mean? So I'll let it go if somebody can utilize it. If you can't utilize it. You know, I'm I'm looking to get what I paid for it. I'll pay the shipping. I'll pay to ship it to you within the lower 48. Uh, outside of the lower 48, um, you ship it. You pay to ship it. You can hear the Windy Nation bouncing up there because I got it on a... I, I have a jerry rigged right now because... It's on the pole that the, the high energy turbine should have been on. And it hits a resonant frequency and even with the guy wires it still dances a little bit. It's not perfectly balanced. But it definitely... Uh, the noise you're hearing is the mount that I have. It's, it's rattling on top of the tower. It's... Uh, but it's working. You know, it's generating electricity. It's coming in. It's actually working pretty good coming through the new wire. I like it. But that's why I want to make a, a mount for the slip ring. I'm going to put that slip ring on it and I'm going to make a, a mount mounting system for it that'll bolt on top of a flange that I'll weld to the top of the pipe because I'll take the tower down and weld a new flange on it. But uh, I'm getting some pretty good power outputs out of it still. It's, a, it, it, it's always been a good turbine. Good, reliable turbine. Let me slide that down a little bit. There we go. But that's basically about where I've been all day with this. And you can see the blue LED blinking. Once I get up over, the higher the voltage, the uh, faster it blinks until it actually turns on the relay. But, uh... Yeah, that's it there. I mean, it's 47, 52, 48, 50 watts AC, you know, inverted voltage. And there's a 15 mile an hour wind. We just had a 21 mile an hour wind gust not too long ago. 14 mile an hour wind. And, you know, the winds are very, fairly steady today. You know, it, it's been pretty consistent at pushing 10, 15 amps all day at about 12 to 16 volts. So, you know, that's pretty good, I think. I'll take it. Oh, here's a strong wind. See, my winds are coming east-northeast. I normally don't get winds out of that direction. Usually I get them out of the south-southwest. And east-northeast winds are, there's a couple trees, but there's no leaves on the trees, so it's not that bad. I mean, but it, like I said, it's been pretty steady. I mean, you can see it there. It's hovering around 10 amps. I do like this, but uh, yeah, like I said, anybody that's interested in that high turbine, if it doesn't sell by springtime, then I'm going to probably dismantle it and do something of my own with it. Oh, there's 18 mile an hour wind. 18, 19, 19 steady. It's holding that, wow, it's still holding that 19. 18. I can't believe there's dumbasses out driving tonight. Fools. 
I was out riding around on the quad before, and it was windy and cold, and oh, my ass was frozen and everything. But I, I don't care. <laughs> um, but okay, well, that's it for this one. I, uh, I'm gonna make a new video because I got to show something else that I just got that I'm actually quite happy about. Uh, so okay, any questions, comments, whatever, subscribe and like and favorite and post to Facebook and tell your friends, family, your uncles, sell my video. I don't care. You want to subscribe? Go for it. You don't? Pfft. Whatever. Okay. Thanks for watching.